and we're in welcome back everyone how is everyone doing in the chat hope everybody is well welcome back to another episode of the thfc show with myself who had of course my dog over there tapping tobes as well how are you bro you good i'm good man i'm just a bit sad that holiday season's over for me man i've literally had the whole month holidaying literally holidaying the whole month Bro, I said, yeah, people think I take the piss when I come on our streams and I'm like, yeah, I see you gallivanting on the story or when I poke fun at you on Twitter. If you don't follow this guy on Instagram, <laughs> don't do yourself a favor. Pause the stream right now. Go tap in Tobes on Instagram and go follow <laughs> This brother is gallivanting. What is it? The, the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean. <laughs> oh, no everywhere. Greece, Corfu. Listen. Tobes is living a different life. Listen, I, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to be like you, big man. Nah, so, bro, bro. Trust me. It's, oh, this, no, it's, it's the anal is cracked up to be. Don't worry yeah, about yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> what he said. that's what he said. Then he's got a colada by the beach. This runner. I'm watching, <laughs> you. I'm watching you. But no, I'm glad you're enjoying, man. Listen, it's, mm. it's, it's been a, a busy week as well. And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, yo, where is X? I see X in the title. X is on the way. He will be joining us shortly. As you know, he... If you ever watch his stories as well, he's always gallivanting and everywhere and doing his health clubs. One of his health club days, you know what I'm saying? So he'll, he'll join us in due time. But in the meantime, make sure you're getting involved in a conversation as well. Throw your comments in, throw your super chats in. Make sure you like the video as well if you're enjoying the stream. Do you know what I mean? It should be a lively one. We'll try and go for about an hour. Um, and yeah, subscribe to the channels if you haven't already. Both the links are in the description. Both of us would appreciate it. We'd, we've been trying to be consistent this season, you know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? North London derby now. Big one. It's only right we came back with a big one as well. X should be joining us. subscriber here. count as well. You're literally like 90 away from 6K. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not like, from 6K as well. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel as well, I would really appreciate that as well. Help the boys, man. Do you know what I mean? steadily grinding this thing and do you know what I mean the more we see the numbers the more it kind of keeps us motivated to kind of keep this thing going as well so help Honey. us you bring this incredible content but let's crack on with it shall we anyway because this week brother hey, if not the biggest one it's a big one bruv the North London derby 2-2 at the Emirates and pre-game bruv a lot of people were kind of a lot of Spurs fans were predicting losses a lot of Arsenal fans are predicting, hey, smoke shows. That's um, right. 5-1, some man was saying. 3-0, some man 8-0 I was hearing. I was like, yo, all right, listen, the, the, the mood is going to be one of them like, oh, this is going to be the humbling moment, if you like. But what was your kind of feeling going into the game before it? I was, I don't, I'm always nervous going into a North London derby, innit? But I was, I was excited. I was actually excited right excited that at least irrespective of what the result is going to be we're going into this game to actually try and compete with Arsenal not to try and retreat and and try and absorb what they can throw at us like we're actually going to give it as good as 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 we take it right and um that's something that we've not really been able to do the last couple of years unfortunately even with a manager that me and you both loved in Conte I remember after the North London derby last season at, at the Emirates it was poor I know Emerson got sent off but we were 2-1 down before Emerson's red card and we weren't really retreating from our own half obviously people are going to say oh no it's kind of difficult when you've got a team that are so good in possession yes mm -hmm. absolutely but it's more about the intent Spurs taking more risk in the average position of some of the players in the football pitch trying to play further up the pitch trying to actually squeeze Arsenal we didn't see any of that in our last two seasons right so it was always now with Ange Postacoglu and with his pre-match comments is we're going to see Spurs actually try and go for the game try and get some shots at Arsenal's goal try and try and um Try and make Arsenal worry about us instead of us worry about Arsenal. Mm -hmm. and, and and you see, with that mentality as well, I, that's what I felt going into the game. I was like, I know if there's one thing coming into this is Ange is going to almost live by his guns, die by his guns. But it almost felt like, I hope he, I, I felt like anyway, I hope he's got a plan B ready. I hope he's got some kind of tactical tweaks within there where maybe the ball into the channel, maybe not play the, the line as high if possible. But the way Arsenal fans were talking before this game, you were kind of thinking, if we did go in there playing this game, they were saying PSV just came and tried this. They were unbeaten coming into us and they've got talented players and they would smoke them 4-0. So in my eyes, honestly, I, I was coming into this quite nervous as well, knowing that we'd won, what, 
one in the last 30 visits there, which was, what, 2010? Mm-hmm. Bro, we had not made a good trip, I think, of the last, what, over the last decade. It's been messy, messy trips there. So I, coming into this, I was pretty nervous. But the way the game started then, I can't lie to you, even though Arsenal had a lot of the possession and were kind of controlling the tempo, if you like, the first 20 minutes, I liked the way we were kind of dealing they weren't really dangerous. Aside from kind of one initial chance um, with, I think it was Jesus at the back post and Bicario kind of made a big early save. I didn't really see anything too tough. And then maybe as, as kind of a little bit went on, you started to see a little bit of a theme of Saka getting into a bit of space, going 1v1 with you, Dolgi. And he kind of picked up the early yellow card and you're kind of thinking, hey, mm. is this going to be kind of one of those long day for him? But I thought the way he kind of dealt with it after that, brilliant. But... The first 20, 30 minutes, I thought it was kind of like a fairly even game. A lot of people were kind of looking back at it saying they felt like Arsenal dominated. But what did you kind of make of the first half? I think I agree with with the people who are saying that Arsenal dominated, you know, because I I feel oh. like I, I feel like with, I, with my wife um, I him, by the way, sorry. It was a little bit, it was a little bit. It was, uh, but I, I think it's I think it's it's gl- it's going in and out, but now it's calm. It's it's calm. <laughs> the chat is saying you switched with my Wi-Fi. Which is crazy, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I actually felt the first thirty-five minutes it was it was looking a little bit spooky for Spurs, and that's to be expected though because it's Arsenal away is a tough fixture, right? They finished second in the league last year for a reason, and they have the personnel that they have for a reason. It's because they're unfortunately they're a really good side now, and they were playing like it in the first thirty minutes. Not even in the sense where they were like, I don't think it was like a case of them like racking up like a gazillion and. Uh, chances but I felt like they had enough chances manufactured by some partly due to their moves and the majority partly due to them pressing us high squeezing us um, squeezing us high up the pitch and making us turn over possession and which result which resulted in chances for them I remember like they had a pretty good shape on the right hand side to try and pen destiny in and Obviously, his back pass to the goalkeeper was was short. Inketia latched onto it. Big save from Vicario. Again, Madison drops deep to try and collect the ball to try and get us out of the first phase. But again, their press. Jesus is hot on it. Takes the ball off Madison. And if he had more composure, you, you're probably seeing Spurs go two 0 down. So I do think that they were good. They were good value for their lead in the first 35 minutes. Even though their goal was the biggest. The biggest slice of fortune like the biggest slice of fortune and and that's why like I'm that's why some of these Arsenal fans they're kind of pissing me off in the way they're like oh we gifted Spurs that we gifted Spurs the draw and stuff because Jorginho I'm like bruv you scored from a penalty from a dubious handball and you scored from a crazy deflection crazy deflection but I've seen I've seen people trying to even like criticize Romero for that and I'm literally thinking brother what are you supposed to do and we'll get to the handball in a little bit but I just thought for the deflection I'm just like what are you actually supposed to do you're meant to put your body on the line and I'm sorry deflections happen for me I was a little bit annoyed at how much kind of space Saka had on the right hand side to just receive the ball and the fact that Yogi wasn't tight on none of the midfielders had kind of come and pressed him and he just kind of took two or three touches before he just picked out a shot and I'm like you know that's a threat. You know that's going to be one of their weapons. Why would we not kind of shut that down a lot quicker? So when the deflection kind of goal went in, I thought, Lord have mercy. What What did you make of Saka doing Madison's celebration? I want to get your thoughts on that, bro. Boy, listen, it was... <laughs> I said you, know what? <laughs> you know what? You know, if it was... If it, if the shoe was in the other foot, I would love... If I'm, if I, And I was an Arsenal fan, I would love that. That is what you call shithousery of the highest level. And I'm all for that. I'm all for that. But my thing is, if you're going to dish it, you better be prepared to take it. And boy, oh boy, did he take it. So i got no issues with him doing that. Obviously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rile me up in the heat at the moment, saying, oh, look at this guy taking the piss out of us. But from a neutral perspective, I love yeah. that shit. I love that shit because it means, you know what? I you, You're going to start it? Cool, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> you know for me, it was like it, it was it was twofold for me. I was annoyed because I'm like, brother, why don't you ever go and get your own moves? I've seen you trying to <laughs> rap with the flow, I've seen you now steal Madison's flow. Like, what are you gonna do next? Jude Bellingham, like, when are we gonna see the trademark Saka celebration? Like, come on, mm-hmm. get your own move. But then, as you said, there was a part of me that was kind of thinking, Oh, this is what we need. 
this is a little bit of like the derby energy rattle the players up. If anything, I want to see now how Madison reacts to this. And bro, I can't lie to you. <laughs> Immediately straight after he gave the ball away on the edge of the box, <laughs> what was going through your mind at that point? Because you know you've seen in many of North London derbies. Once that first goal goes in, it's almost like a slippery slope from there. So once that mistake happens from Madison as well, what's yeah. going through your head? <laughs> oh, what the 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 one where he's on the edge of the box. Like, yeah, 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 that one was mad. I was like, Fam. the Jesus when, when, when Jesus blazed it, I was like, good old day. Good old, good old Jesus. That's what we can count on Gabriel Jesus for, right? He can dubs man on the wing and he would beat two, three players. But when you ask this guy to be composed in the box, his mind just goes blank. So I was just like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Gabriel BCM Jesus, that's his name. Gabriel BCM Jesus, thank you for being an, a superb player in every position but the opposition box, right? That's what was going through my mind. I said, Madison, you got off Scott free. He needs to be better there because Arsenal's press is good. They got one of the best, they got they got one of the best pressing structures in the Prem. So we need to be tighter when we're trying to build out from the back. But in all honesty, I was actually happy, really, really happy that yeah. Jesus completely blazed it. Cause I'm like, whew, the in oh, chance. That's, 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 that's the moments of capitulation for me almost where you just uh, for me I just started to get nervous straight away thinking rotted this is this is now where it starts to get ugly two or three nil they're gonna get control of the game but mm-hmm. Michael from Poland here says not gonna lie boys I was stressing out during the first half but then the camera angle showed Andrew on the sideline chilled as fuck and I decided he is so calm that so should I basically my manager <laughs> um and talking Barca here says where's expressions Expressions will be here very, very shortly. Um, he just sent me a message, so should be joining us very shortly. But uh, you got makeshift Eli sends super chat as well. Big up yourself, he says. Who has here with the Ethernet cable fund? <laughs> Much love to you both. Hey, that will be going towards the broadband this month. I appreciate it, my brother. <laughs> I see Spassin asking, Where's X as well? Coming, and listen, coming. without further ado, let's introduce the man on stage himself to send. Big X in the building. We saying, bro, you good? Blood, I'm asking, is this the Uber show, blood? Because you man got me in the back, fam. Pause, blood. You know them way there, bro. What is this, fam? You know them way there. These man got a diamond in the back like Curtis Mayfield, blood. You know how long I've been waiting here, fam? You know, big man thing. You know how long I've been waiting here, fam? No, no, allow it, fam. My Uber drivers ain't look like you, blood. Man like hey, Little Dirk, man like Fu Ak, blood. A man like Luke Cage meets Tyrese, blood. Valentino with his missus all over the globe. You know what I mean? Sweet lady and that, fam. This walking hey. diabetes MF are in the top right, blood. Listen, I want to know what's going on, fam. You man got big X in the back. What's going on, bro? Bro, we have, we, man we rushed from the gym, yeah. you know. Man rushed know. from the gym. That's what I'm saying. have went to the spa, fam. Listen, so when the show started at half five, we were like, all right, you know what? Let's get the ball rolling. Tom's got to be somewhere afterwards. I said, you know what? Let's build it up like a Royal Rumble entry. We'll, 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 we'll build up the first 20 minutes tempo. And then introduce him like, there we go. And there you are. You just Fam, I can build something as well if you want, blood. And you can go back to your show, blood. If you want. You know them <laughs> way, Dish. Have you watched Why Did I Get... Have you, have you watched Why Did I Get Married? Yeah, yeah that's you, blood. You know he did, he called me he called me Mike from one Mike Mike, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Mike and Sheila you know Google yo it. <laughs> yo you what I'm talking about yo you're a man on a super super sends a big one as well big up man appreciate it bro <laughs> <laughs> hey listen i was just talking about the first goal as well what a fucking entrance man big up everyone make sure you're liking the stream as well i was just Come talking on. about the first goal bro we uh that conceded deflection what did you make a sack of doing madison celebration bro listen yeah listen i saw what you said in it and you're absolutely right he is a good you blood that brother saka is sister at Whoopi goldberg's son blood <laughs> so i don't know who he thought he was, blood. You get me about bullseye. Man tried to do it twice as well. Man's out here copying man celebration and you're not winning games, bro. Like, what is this? Like, what is this? When Madison spun that you like a Nigerian Beyblade fam. Yes, I know he missed the, the penalty for England, blood. But listen, with a name like Bakayo Saka, we know where he's from, blood. Let's be honest, blood. He got spun like a Nigerian Beyblade. You know what I mean? Sent to Lagos. And if I knew another part in Nigeria, I'd say it too, blood. But yeah, Lagos is all I've got. You know what I mean, fam? So yeah, 
he got spun, blood. You know what I mean, fam? And as for Arsenal, like, these man, yeah, I swear down. Like, I said it, yeah, we moonwalked on the carpet. Yeah, it may have only been a draw, blood, but these man were lucky to score, blood. You know them way there? Yeah. They were lucky, fam. A deflection and then a penalty, which wouldn't have been given if they didn't change the rules recently. And furthermore, I'm pretty sure the ball hit off someone before it even hit his hand, blood. The man's hand was down here, blood. You get yeah. me, fam? Like, it was a Paralympic penalty, blood. That's the only reason why we would get away with it if it was a Paralympics, blood. His hand was down there, fam. That's what it was. It was a joke thing. So all you Arsenal fans being like, oh, yeah, no, nah, um, you lot didn't batter us, this, that, and the other. We went total. So what are you talking about, blood? Quinton Fortune FC, blood. Fortunate goals for both of your things, blood. You know what I mean? Our goals now, less of that, bruv. We split you man apart, rude boy. That's what we did, fam. We split them apart. I'm telling you, packet of walkers, bro. Opened up, it. lad. Gary Lineker, bro. What's man talking about, fam? That's what happened to Arsenal, bro. So I don't want to hear any chat from them, blood. You know what I'm saying, bro? We, like, when when uh, the 10 minutes got added on, fam, bro, usually I'm like, I'll be like, 10 minutes, end the game, end the stream. What's man talking about? I was saying, extend the stream, blood. Yeah? <laughs> Let's do this, fam. You know what I mean? I wanted yeah. 20 minutes, half an hour, fam. Do you know what I mean? Because any team out of us was going to score, it was going to be us. You know yeah. what I mean? Agree. Is that what you felt as well? Uh, um, you see, after we equalised as well, like, did you feel that was a deserved equaliser? Because I, I thought the goal was beautiful as well. As you said, Madison spun, man, like a, what was it? Nigerian Beyblade, you said. Yeah. yeah. And I can't even like it. The thing Son, Son had like three men on him to get that first time in the far corner. Bro, that's that pure nine that we've been saying. I think you said it last year. One of the pure best finishers in the Premier League when it comes to finishing. And you saw it right there, bro. But did you think that that, that was deserved at that point, considering they were kind of the better team in the first half? 100%. I'm not going to lie, yeah. They were the better team in the first half. And I have said that openly, innit, yeah. I didn't think we would reply. I thought it would have taken us the second half to reply, innit. But when I saw us reply... That quick, it just shows it, bruv. It shows the difference in the team, bro. It shows the fossil football's dead, bro. It shows yeah. the rock and roll football's back, bro. Usually, when we go down at the Emirates and them are making all their noise, these these man's heads go down, blood, and you just know it's gonna be a dark day, You're especially after a, mis a mistake like that from Ramiro. It's just like, oh, it's one of them days for Tottenham, it's one of them days for Tottenham, bro. James Madison, bro. Madison's blood. What's man talking about, fam? James Mascoin, blood. What's man talking about, fam? Where was Martin No Shoulder Guard, blood? Your captain. <laughs> scrub. Scrub. Where was he, blood? Man want to talk to me about older guards better than Madison. Man want to talk to me about, oh, son's lucky to get into the starting uh, combined 11, blood. If Martinelli was fit, blood. Ricky Martinelli, blood. Man, I'm smoking budge. I'm telling you, fam, that king size, kinder surprise, Robbie, fam. Jaden Sandwich, <laughs> bruv. Man like troops. Both of them, fam. Budge, blood. Them man are smoking budge, you ban it, fam. And I told them to their face, apologies need to be made, fam. Madison, two assists, blood. He got more assists in that game than Odd, Odd Guard's got all season. What's man Facts. talking about? Facts. Came, yeah. to, came, nah. to Odegaard's, came to Odegaard's ground, yeah, and put two assists on his head. He put did. two assists on his head. Odegaard had 64% pass accuracy. Don't even get it twisted. Even if James Madison had a poor game, because I don't even think that was James Madison's best game for Spurs. We've seen him play better for Spurs, and that, that tells you the levels. That was James Madison at a like he was he was a height and he puts two assists on your head top. He was that's it. That's and he puts it. two assists on your head top. That's what we talk two. about. Decision making when it comes to players like and did, you know what's mad as well, obviously, because we were talking about last season where Spurs were basically retreating and having to just play on the counter-attack to basically attack under Conte in the same fixture. But if you recall the game last season. In the first half, especially towards the end, we had about like three or four moments where we were countering and it was like two V1s, three V2s. And the final pass was always dodgy. I think there was one from Sun to Kane that was, yep. that was dodgy. One from Richarlison to Sun that was dodgy. Another one from Sun to... I can't even remember who it was. That It was really poor. But this is the difference. Do you get what I'm saying? James Madison, two times in, he's in a position where he can play a pass to put a player in on goal and he does it. And that's what that's yeah. that's what matters. That that's and, why and listen, that's the that's the quality you get with matters. 
that's the quality you get with him at the end of the day. But at half time, yeah, one thing I noticed here was on their end, I saw them bringing on them two diet brothers, uh, Jorginho and uh, yep. Shy Havertz. What did yep. you man make of that substitution? Because you see me, even though we went in one one, I'm thinking, all right, cool, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be in one one. Let's see, and if he can come out with something. The second I saw them two brothers warming up, I said, yeah, man, we, we got some barbecue chicken potentially in the second half. Bro. What did you know when, when you saw it? When Declan Rice came on, even though Declan Rice weren't doing nothing in the first half, he's always a threat, blood. You know them way there. And that 100 million on his head will make me think, oh, you know what, blood? He's, he's sensational, blood. But let me tell you this, yeah. When that scrub Jorginho was warming up, blood, and Neil from the in-betweeners, man, like dry Havertz, fam, I said straight away, blood, these man went from rice to couscous, blood, in the middle, bro, and it was peak. It was peak. I was celebrating, bro. Go look at this stream. At 1-1, one, one, I was celebrating. I was like, oh, we're going to cook these, man, this, that, and the other, rah, rah, rah. And then, obviously, you know what I mean? What happened, happened. And even when that happened, I always knew we could get back into the game. Like, for me, yeah. like... Arsenal weakened, like Arteta making all of them changes. He weakened his team, innit? Like, Rice, obviously, they said that he's got a back injury or whatever. Yeah. And who was the other person they took off? Was it Teabag, blood? It was, uh, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Teabag yeah. from Prison Break, blood. That scrub, fam. You know what I mean? When I, I told you, when, when Man saw Vieira, when Man saw Vieira, blood, I'm telling you, fam, I thought I, I woke up and I, I, had school in, I had school the next day, blood. But Vieira, forget Patrick. Blood, listen, <laughs> these man wanted to throw all these men into the squad, bruv. Look, do you know who we got? Do you know who we got, blood? Mm. Eve St. Laurent, this sous chef, blood, yeah? Patrick Viagra, blood, yeah? Just <laughs> fucking know, blood. I'm telling you, fam, just know, blood. Our middle is mad. You see Whoa. when Benton Cool comes back, man, them, yeah? What? Aye. Aye. Man, I forgot about him, bro. <laughs> Man's got Benton Cool. Bro, even when Brian or Messi comes back, blood, he's going to be Whoa. cooking under Ange, bruv. Yo, you see, listen. Tobes, you when, see? Let's, there's one more. When Sessignon comes back, blood, they nah, can nah, rip nah. his contract up. Like, man, oh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Get him out of here, bruv. Get him out. Get him out, You almost had me in the middle of it. You almost had me, bro. I was like... I was like, where's he going with this one? But nah, Tobes, what did you make of that kind of half-time change as well? And like, you see... Basuma and Sa, I want to talk about in particular as well, and like the combination they be doing. X just touched on it there as well. I feel like with Benton Core now, there's not that pressure or rush for us to like, yo, we need Benton Core back in. Like last year, he was the creator, he was the driver, he was the DM. Because Basuma, Sa, not Madison, nobody was there. He was doing it by himself. But now with these two, the way they're playing, do you feel like now, all right, we can just ease him back in type of thing? Hundred percent, hundred percent. There isn't. There's no longer a burning pressure to to have to have him up to speed. Like I think with the emergence of Papi Matasar, we can give Bentancourt all the time in the world to sort of pick back up where he left off um, earlier on this year when he got the injury, man. And I was actually discussing this, you know, in the chat with um, some of my mates today. I feel like Papi Matasar has basically helped us lock down our right central midfield option. In my opinion, I think when you look at our midfield, that's the one position where I feel like we're Champions League ready in a sense where we have a starter who is a top player and we have the guy who's going to come in who's looking like a really good player. So the drop off is not deep. Like we could play Saar in the Champions League and I think he'll be calm. We could, we've could we seen Saar play up against Man United and Arsenal already, two of the top three sides. Um, according to league finishes last season. And we're going to see him start against Liverpool as well. He's got the physical quality. He's got the technical quality as well. And he's got the he's got the hunger to actually learn and improve. So, yeah, man, I, I'm really, really happy with those options there. And I feel like I'm just really happy that we finally have a manager who's given this kid a chance because we've been banging on about giving this kid a chance for yonks. You remember, Fuad, before we stopped the show last uh, last season, right? We were talking when when um, when Benton Cool got injured, right? In January, play Star, yeah. play Star, give this guy minutes. Give this guy minutes. He's got the build to play in the Premier League. He's got the te temperament to play in the Prem, and he's got the technical quality. Bro, I was, even saying, I was even saying this summer if we sold Hoybier, I'm fine because I know he can step in. And and that was just but he needs to go, blood. He stopped playing for us time ago, bro. Bro, I, come I, on. I, because you can actually still make value on him, and you know with Sar, three million we we got him for blood. 
Get him out of it. Easily. Get him and, out. Bro, he's and, a part and, of the problem, bro. Listen, Hoy Bear in that Arsenal t- Arsenal thing, we're losing that game, bro. You get me? 100. Yeah, he can come on and do something, yeah. But when I looked at our starting lineup and I said, you know what? Like, the only people that are playing are guys that weren't really problems before. It's not the back line. The whole back line's different, fam. BBL, blood. Get me. I got the Brazilian <laughs> bum lift, fam. So what one got, bro. The, the back ain't flat, blood. It's not a Kira Knightley yeah. thing no more, bro. You get me, fam. Man got the injections. Man got the full service, fam. You get me, yeah? When I was seeing that, bro, destiny, blood. Ooh, doji, bro. You get me, fam. Prime Danny Rose, blood. It's man mad. You get me? When I was seeing P squared, fam. Pedro Porro, blood. You know, like that, fam. Man like Romaldini, blood. I'm telling you, fam, and prime Van Dyke Ven, blood. What's man talking about, blood? Hey, I'm telling you, bro. Really when I saw that, really when I good. saw that back line, really? I was like, come on, bro. Come on. Yeah. Let's see what you man are on. You know we what I'm saying? Win. And we were more defending in that first half than I've ever... This, that's the most defending I've seen us do all season. Mm-hmm. And it 100%. still wasn't fossil football, bro. Do you know? Do you know? And that, that's that's the point I was going to come to as well now. It's like, you see, you see the even passing. When, even when you the second it. half... Yeah, bro. Even when the second half comes, yeah, it's like I know you're seeing bare defensive, and you're thinking, "Yo, all right, well, one-one, we're still hanging in this or whatever." But the way we kept still popping it out the back, Vicario, Romero, Porro, even when it broke down or a mistake happened, it's like, "Hey, hey, hey, it don't matter. We go yeah. again. We yeah. go again." And keep on, for me, uh, this is this is where I'm a little bit like, "Yo," I was a little bit uncomfortable, brother, because I was like, "I'm not used to this. I'm used to yo." Once, once it gets to like 60 minutes, shut up, shot, back five, two in front of them, Son and Kane, inshallah, mm-hmm. let's pray for the best. Now mm-hmm. I'm seeing, yo, triangles, and it's like, yo, we're actually beating the press. That's what's impressing me. It's like, yo, I ain't used to seeing my team with this much cojones in a North London derby away yeah. at the Emirates on top of that as well. And I think, I think one good thing about our goals as well and just the way we played is we had the ingredients of of things that people praise Arsenal for doing. So if you look at, if you look at even in the lead up to our first goal as well, Brennan Johnson, big chance, big save from, from David Raya, from back to front, really good move. Yeah, yeah, really, really good move and, and big save from David Raya. And then even another one we had in the lead up to the goal as well, another chance from Brennan Johnson, where he's obviously hit it straight at, at Raya. And then obviously the ball came back to Madison and did what he did to Saka. But the point I'm making is not only were we able to construct moves from back to front to actually try and breach Arsenal's defence, even in the second half as well, you hear like Arsenal fans, they praise players like Odegaard. And the thing is, Odegaard is a quality player, but they praise Odegaard because he's, I think he had some stat for like most, the midfielder who's won the, the ball the most times in the opposition half, high up the pitch, like most, most balls won. And when you look at our second goal, what did Madison do? High up the pitch, strips, strips Jorginho, takes the ball off him, plays the pass straight onto Son. Son didn't even need to break his stride. His son, all, all he needed to do is just run up and caress that shot into the bottom oh, corner. Do you know Bang. what that is? Weight and pass. That's what you yep. Pass appreciation. You know, previous years, the amount of man that would have been in that same position and would have hit that to the corner flag. If that was a Lamella, if that was a Mora, if that was If Son was on the other side of that and he was the one passing that, yeah. That was going. That was going, you get me? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Bro, James Madison's changed everything, bro. Listen, Son didn't know what one-touch football was since Ange Postacoglu, blood. Because I'm telling you, Son is the man that takes about 50 touches, blood. You get me, fam? This guy's on this guy's on a Dharma thing, blood, when it comes to football, blood. Bare touches, bro. You get me, fam? This one-touch football is crazy. Like, like the, the <laughs> fact that every player is doing it as well is what I like to see, bro. You get me? I was, I think- I'm was. i usually shook when we play out the back, and especially at the Emirates. I'm like, what are you man doing? What are you man doing? But with how fluent it was, obviously, we made a couple of mistakes, like with Madison, with that lethargic thing and Udoji. But Arsenal, fa- like, you get me? They never capitalised off either of them mistakes. Yeah. That's your business. That ain't got nothing to do with me, blood. In the second half, these man never had a shot, bruv. Um, man like Vicario Black, he never had a he had never had a save to make. Do you get me? In the second half, he was cheesing, bro. Yeah, you're gonna make the mistakes as well when you keep trying to play kind of like attacking football and trying to okay. play out the back anyway. But you yeah. see, you touched on Sunday. It all right, he got his two goals. 
did you want to see him stay on or did you feel like he deserved to come off? Because for me personally, I was a little yeah. annoyed that, that he come off for that. When you're on a hat trick I was in a London derby, and then I'm um, no offense, Richardson. Listen, I, I, you, you've been doing your thing last game, you got it, you was the last savior hero, got your goal in the Carabao. But my, my guy's on a hat trick right now. This is this right, is, I was this fuming. Is right I was who did they bring on? I, I, they brought on Solomon first, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that was for bringing that John. was a substitution I wasn't happy with. I thought if you're going to bring on Richarlison, bring him on then, in it. You get me? Like, I'm not saying don't bring on Solomon, but when he took Son off, I knew we weren't winning the game, in it. I knew it was just a draw thing. You get me, fam? Because Madison came off, Son came off, and he brought on Hoiberg and what, Richarlison, right? Yeah. Because Yeah, thing is fam. He... I knew the game was done, blood. I knew it, yeah. fam. Obviously, Richarlison 100%. had a couple of chances, but... Son needed to be on that pitch. Son was our focal point. He was the only speed we had left on that pitch, blood. Because yeah. Brennan Johnson came off, innit? I think with um with that one as well. Yeah, it was it was slightly disappointing, but I'm not really gonna be too mad at and for it, right? Um, can't really do it. Like Rome wasn't built in a day, innit? Like, of course, I'd love to 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 win there. And when the opportunity was presenting itself, it looked like we had a chance to go on and win that game. But, um. I do think, though, the subs, like, when you see Hoybier come on the pitch, when you see Solomon come on the pitch, like, we're not really looking to go ahead and then go and win a game of football. It's more a case of, like, trying to keep the game ticking and try and see it out and, and just and just shepherd the draw to, into, into full time, man. Um, I really would have liked to see Son on the pitch stay, stay on for full time because I feel like if he stays on you still got an element of cutting edge because let's be real, the difference between Son and Richarlison in the box is is worlds apart, worlds apart. And I, I actually think if he would have, like, he didn't need to bring on Solomon because I don't really understand what Solomon was coming to do in that game. Like, I get it. We don't really want to see Son out on the wing because yeah. Son on the wing, it doesn't look nice. But when he's on a hat trick, put Richarlison through the middle, put Son out wide, leave Kulisevsky on, and you still have... A semblance of an attacking threat, man. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you take off Sun and you bring on Solomon and you got Richarlison, it's just that that f the, the front three that finished the Solomon, Richarlison, and Kulu wasn't really going to do it. That, nah, that, that's what I'm Brav, can't Richard, Brav, man could have even left Rich Son down the middle and put Richarlison on the left. He used to do that for oh, Everton, that, bro. Yeah, it's true. He used to it's do true. that for Everton, bro. So it's why true. can't we do that, Brav? Like, I'm not saying I, I, I dislike Solomon as a player, innit? But there's a difference between a substitute and a scrub to shoot, blood. And when he came on, yeah, I knew that, yeah, that was it. We're not winning, fam. Like, you get me? Like, we're not winning. And it's not yeah. even his fault, blood. Like, yeah. the only reason why I made no videos on this or... Because I don't want to be seen as, oh, the negative one with how how um, how um beautiful things are at the club, innit? But when you actually look at it, yeah, it's the same thing right, with Pochettino, bruv. Man turning water into wine, yeah? If we was in Europe, we wouldn't... We'd be getting battered right now. Our oh, squad yeah, yeah. is so thin, blood. Yeah. If Basuma and Madison get injured... We're finished, blood. We're finished. We're finished. Bro, There's no one to replace them, blood. Yeah, the sun team. gets injured, the goals are drying up, blood. Do you know them way there, fam? Like, the bench is a memorial bench, fam. You get me? And you know who that's down to? That's down to the owners, bro. You know what I'm saying, fam? Well, we're, we're lucky that we've got one game a week. We're even lucky we're at the Carabao Cup, you know? We'd have had a game this... You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you, know, you, know, you know what, though, as well, like... I must admit, when we when I did see Havertz and Jorginho coming on, and I saw no Declan Rice. I was I was actually happy. I was like I was like, yes, we got to capitalize on this because I actually thought Declan Rice was having a good game in the first half, and I feel like it's much easier to play up against the midfield of Jorginho, Havertz, and Odegaard versus Rice, Odegaard, and Vieira, and it played out in the second half. I felt Saar and Basuma were just dominant, man. Like, Saar just bodying man in the 50-50s and Basuma just... Basuma is just Basuma, man. Like, he's just... He's just a quality... Quality, quality, normal, quality man. player, man. Quality player. Quality. He's, he, he's made it look normal, bruv. He's made it look normal. In the end, though, do you not think that 2-2 two -two was, like, a fair result? Or, or are you a little bit disappointed to actually not walk away with the win? I think it's fair. I think it's fair, man. I don't know. It's what a do fair think? result... For what I mm. saw, but like you get me, like I said, I reckon we could have won that in it. Like if maybe if Son stayed on the field, do you know what I mean? Like that's what I it is. But when you look at it, let's come on, let's let's be honest in it. Their squad's a lot better than ours. They're a complete article in the sense where Arteta's been there for how many long long years and he's been backed in it. He's they spent mad peas 
we had no right in it. And just had a preseason and a few months, blood. Like it wasn't a free hit to me because I went into that game predicting two two, and I got it absolutely right. Do you know what I mean? But and the North London derby is never a free hit to me. Even if we play Arsenal in a friendly, blood, I'm not trying to get battered less of that. Yeah. You know them way there. So, but like the way that everyone was talking was like, oh yeah, it just is what it is. Do you know what I mean? Ra ra ra. So for us to perform like that just shows me, you know what I'm saying, fam? Like, yo, like we're actually in, we're, we're in for a good season, blood. You know them way there, fam? We're actually in for a good season. And when we actually get some more players, we're going to be cooking. When we get our players back from injury, we'll be cooking. And when we get some more players in general, it's going to be mad. And, that, and and I think that's the biggest thing is like, I felt like this was going to be the first big test. Almost like, yeah, you've done the, the Bournemouth, the Burnleys, Olympian United, Cool, you got those wins and you got your confidence up, but this is going to be kind of where maybe the bubble bursts, if you like. And especially because we've got Liverpool next as well. I said, these two weeks for me are going to be the ones where I look at this squad, I look at this manager and I get a real gauge of kind of where they're at, bro. And I'll be honest, I walked away from that disappointed that we didn't get. Even you say when like Sun come off, I felt like Richarlison had one or two chances where it's like, yo, you could snatch the game there, brother. Like, And, and, and I, we could have walked away from that with all three points. And I'm thinking... Fucking hell. How many chances yeah, do, you, yeah. do you walk away from the Emirates thinking you could have walked mm-hmm. away with all three points? And I'm like, could that have been an opportunity missed? Because you know you want to break them kind of un- not winning somewhere streaks or whatever. But either way, I thought, as you said, there's so many kind of positives to take into it. Uh, before the game, I would have bit your hand off for, for a draw. Do you know what I mean? So uh, at the end of the day, a 2-2 with that result. And as you said, with them being the better squad and everything... The fact that we were able to control the game and actually still come out feeling good, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah Richarlison. Richarlison could have scored a couple of times, blood. You know what I mean, fam? But with what he's going through, blood, you get me? Man's just not going to comment on that, man. Yeah, I, don't yeah, him, yeah. I don't want him, <laughs> him going to the mountains like Jaden Sancho, blood. If he takes time off, blood, we're gonna, it's going to be peak, fam. Hey, you know what I mean? Nice. I, I, I swear to you, the past three weeks, yeah, I ain't said a peak. I ain't said nothing. Nah, Do your thing, my brother. Do your Listen, thing. He's, he's a sensitive man, bro. Like, man, yeah. man don't want to say anything, blad. You get me? Like, man blocked the Band Sports Ooze account, blad, because they put they they posted a picture of him crying. The admin posted a picture of him crying, saying Richarlison's going through no a tough way. time. No way. No way did he block you. Mad. Not me, blood. Listen, you get me? You block back. <laughs> 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 not me, blood. Hey, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, pause, blood. Not me, blood. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Less of that, blood. You know what I mean, <laughs> fam? He didn't block me, blood. He blocked the man. I didn't even post that, innit? I don't run the account, innit? That's yeah. what it is, but... Yeah. yeah. But it's so, crazy. That's what I'm saying. He's a sensitive man, blood. So hopefully... He is, he is. Hopefully, I, I, I you know think. what I mean? He can come good, blood. You know what I'm saying? I do, I do think, though, he will He will score some more goals for Spurs throughout the season. I just... I don't know. For me, on the, on the whole, like... I'm calm with the with the with the two two man. Like Arsenal fans will say we're over celebrating. We're not over celebrating a draw. Like it was more us. It's more taking the piss out of Arsenal fans who thought they were going to come to come to this game and smoke us, man. Um, yeah. And, and lo and behold, they're the ones that are leaving, saying that they take a point. I was hearing from um, I was I was hearing from on the big six when we we're doing the big six on on Monday how to um Laurie to. Uh, Laurie, uh, Robbie's brother, was saying how, like, yeah, he wants to take a point. Another man, Guna Lee, saying they want to take a point. And I'm like, where? 60 minutes minutes into their game, them man was screaming, yeah, 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 I'll I'll take a Desmond, I'll take a Desmond. I'm like, yeah, Thomas, quick in it. Yeah, it's nuts, it's nuts, it's nuts, it's nuts. And even my brother as well, I remember when I um, I predicted 2-2 on the big six, he's like, oh, you Spurs fans, you're so cocky, this, this, that, and the third. I said, listen, bro, Sue me, I'm gonna be I'm I'm gonna be optimistic. I thought maybe we might lose it, but effort. Let me go for a draw. Like we're playing well. Let's see what happens. And lo and behold, after the game, he had to give me he had to give me give me my dues and give Spurs give Spurs the credit, man. So and the thing is, I feel like uh, one of one uh, a guy from um the new Spurs order pod I do side like he made a really good point. Um, yeah, yeah, I that, yeah, he made a really good point about how like a win. Us not winning, not the worst thing ever because it almost doesn't, it almost takes a target off our back because it's like, I feel like if we do too much too soon, all of a sudden you have all of these unrealistic expectations coming. Oh, they beat an Arsenal. And if we then go beat Liverpool this weekend, which I think we're going to, we're going to do, it's like, oh, wow. Should we be looking at Spurs for, oh, maybe for a title challenge? We're not ready for that. We're no, not ready. For that. So we ain't got no squad for that. 
I swear to you, I tweeted it out yesterday, yeah. I said, bro, I'm not with this now. All of a sudden, every media outlet, all of a sudden, doing an Ange prop, everybody gassing up Spurs and, hey, they're building an exciting new culture. No, 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 no. The same way you lot had us finishing eighth and ninth behind Villa, who had the best window, and, yo, yep, they lost yep. Harry Kane two days before the season. Don't worry about us. Please, just let us work quietly in the background. Don't put us in no title races. Don't talk about us in no Champions Leagues. Just let us do our work. Too many times I've seen it where Sky Sports got us in these top three, top four, Christmas building it all up just to come and try and knock us down in March when the inevitable that we Spurs fans, we all know it's going to happen or some kind of reality is going to set in. But they, they, nah, this is the year and they fumbled it and allow it. Don't give me the fake love. I do not want to. I've seen Ange on like six, seven different media outlets. I see them on Sky. I see them on BT. I see them on Optus. I see them on, um, I think the Athletic. I've seen them on everything. BBC. Gary Lineker did an interview. I'm seeing him everywhere. Talk sport. I'm seeing him everywhere. And it's like, they have propped you up just to be, just to, just to put you down. So, I just hope that Ange just blocks out the noise and we just keep ticking because let's be real, as good as it is now, we're going to lose some games. Like I say, I think we're going to beat Liverpool, but we could easily lose to Liverpool on Saturday and I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't be, like, I'll, I'll be pissed, but it's not going to be the end of the world if we lose to Liverpool. Like there's going to be more hiccups to come over the course of the season because that's just how it is in football. Yeah. We just need to ride it before. Pause. Yeah, you just need to ride, ride this, ride the, ride the wave when it's high, and be balanced when it's low. Simple. Yeah, now, nah, before we get to Liverpool, because I do want to kind of preview that a little bit as well. But um, were there any standouts for you lot individually in this game for you lot? Because I'm sure there's a couple of men who you may want to salute, but are, 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 like for me, I, I would say obviously without regard, Sun, who I mean what he was doing was incredible, but. The one I really want to highlight for me, Mickey van der Ven, bruv. And I, and I yeah, want to get yeah, your thoughts yeah. as well, because when he come in initially, I was sceptical, bruv. I'm I'm a Dutch guy. I love my Dutch ballers, but I'm, I didn't know who this brother was. Tobes mm -hmm. called me in for a stream and said, yo, who's give, give me the lowdown. I said, brother, I have no clue. And all I kept seeing was this one clip of him doing this 90-yard sprint recovering the ball. And I was like, where's the defending, though? Like, all, all man's <laughs> lost. But I ain't seen the defending. Yeah. Talk to me about what you lot are seeing since he's come in because I felt like that game, everyone's talking about Romero and everything. He was a bro, unit. We have replaced Vertongan. And we have replaced Vertongan, bro. Yeah. And what he hasn't got on the ball that Vertongan, like Vertongan had, like he could spray a ball. I ain't seen that yet from Van der Ven, innit? But what he has got is legs Vertongan will never have, blood. You know them way there. The yeah. speed on this brother is crazy, bro. Man, seen him keep up with Rashford. You know them way there. Man, seen that. Man, seen that. You get me. Man, yeah. seen him. He's so calm on the ball as well. Yeah, I know he's your standout, but I'm not gonna lie. My standout three players. I know Son even scored Madison this that and the other, but fam, I'm so used to getting beaten at the Emirates. It's the defense for me, blood. Like Vicario, I'm so used to Larice just spilling things back out into the thing and it getting tapped in. So Vicario is number one for me. Right. And bro, Van de Ven and Bissouma, bruv. Those three players for me, yeah, are, bruv, we'll add Madison to the list because we haven't had any creativity That's in the years. spine right there. So That's I the just spine. I see them players there. Those were my men of the match, blood. You get me? And i got to give a special shout out to Doji as well because getting booked that early, yeah, and holding your head, staying on the field, holding... Look how Emerson got sent off, blood, that time. Do you know them way there? And in care, you should have been sent off, blood. Same thing. I don't care, blood. A stamp's a yeah. stamp. I don't care if the right. thing hit or whatever. You get right. me? It's the intent, blood. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. So for me, yeah, like, those are my standout players, fam. But in regard to Van de Ven, yeah, we've needed a centre-back in so long, in it, bro? And the thing is, having a high line and having someone that can actually get back, blood, it's incredible, bro. Like, I'm I worry less. Like, Ramiro's finally got a partner. You get me, fam. That he can he can trust blood. And even Whoa. Ramiro, he's a hothead, blood. You know what I mean? Sometimes he loses his mind, blood. But hmm. Van de Ven, I've seen nothing but composure from him. Yeah, he scored that own goal or whatever, but we move, blood. Do you know what I'm saying? The brothers composed on the ball, 
You know what I'm saying? And when he does make a mistake, he's got the pace to make up for it, isn't it? So for me, that's a quality sign. And I didn't know much about him before, but I know we haven't had a defender that could run in years. Come on, bro. Man's used to the Michael Dawson and Ledley King, fam. You know what I mean? Let's be honest, bro. That's like 40 pace between them on FIFA, fam. Do you know what I mean? Now, come on, bro. When's the last time we've had a centre-back that could run? For Tongan no, and old Toby, blood. Neither yeah. of them were fast. You get me? Yeah. For Tongan had a bit of legs. Toby was the slowest I've ever seen. Eric Dyer. Bro, we've never had a centre-back that could run. Wait, who's the yeah. last one? I think we... The, unfortunately, the, 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 the one that we had who could run... Sanchez. Sanchez, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I really didn't even want to bring his name up. I didn't yeah. want to. Uh, I, I, I wish him well, but it's just we just I, I don't know. Like it's yeah, just, yeah, 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 he had yeah. to say it. But I, I I do agree with X though. I, I think he's basically nailed down the players that I was going to name. Like Vicario, like a, a lot of like a, a, not all the fan, not the entire fan base, but I feel like a small section of our fan base really gave this guy a hard time off of nothing, like off of nothing, bro. Like clutching at straws, talking about pre-season and oh my god he's the worst keeper ever because he had one or two nervy moments against against Brentford I'm like bro allow it just give the guy a chance like even if even if he even if he goes on to be not so great which I, I hope he doesn't right that we at that point in time we hadn't watched enough of him to make an assessment on his level like yeah. let him play out let's see what he's capable of doing and he's been one of our best players this season I feel like when we talk about how Spurs have improved, one of the big improvements is how we've been defensively. I feel like to a T, every man is playing to a really good standard. Romero has been really good this season. Don't care what anyone says about his mistakes. I thought he had a calm game against Arsenal. That can yeah. happen to any defender. Mickey van der Ven, he's slotted in like he's been here for years. Um, Destiny, he's been fantastic. Pedro Porro at right back, inverted right back. He's been really oh, good for Spurs. And you see the, the confidence now. And just picked them out against two big six opponents, Arsenal away and Man United at home. Games where people are thinking, hmm, he might bring in Emerson because Emerson's more defensive minded. Nope, I want to play my football. I'm going to play Pedro Porro. And I respect it, man. So for me, the defence really been good. And uh, Vicario, breath of fresh air, man. Breath of fresh air, honestly. You know how, you lot both know how much I love Lloris at the club, but like Lloris was dusted. dusted. That shot from Saka, yeah, the low one. I'm not sure if that was on target, was yeah. But, but if that was on target, that was going in if Larice was in goal. Facts. Brav, Vicario didn't see it. It went through the brother's legs. I'm thinking goal. All I see is it, brav. The guy got so far across his goal, his arm was past the post, blood. Yeah. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. yeah the man bro, saved got... it with here. He didn't save it yeah. with his hand, you know. The and, man and made you... sure, man put his whole body in front of that. Hundreds. Get me. Mad 100%. man. I'm telling you, you brav. Listen, you know I bro. See the best thing about him as well, yeah, is is for me the confidence to always offer an angle for the pass as well when the defender. This is it. It's always, this it's not. It. Just, you see, when Larice got the ball, my nervous, my, my stomach was in my ass because I was like, very nervous. Fumble it. This brother was about to do something stupid because he's so stiff. He's just unable to do it. Cool, Vicario. Even though I would say his passing is not the greatest. The fact that he's willingness, and I think that's what I love about Ange. All these players, they seem to have this confidence of, even if I make a mistake, it don't matter. I can still go try again, try again. And, and I think those players that you lot mentioned, honestly, hit the nail on the head for me. Vicario, Van der Ven, Besuma, and Romero as well. People are saying, despite the the red card and the, uh, or the penalty and the the handball, I still thought, aside from that, he still was solid. They're attacking. Had nothing. They nothing, bro. nullified shut bro. everything down. Oh, he so, shut so, everything down. It had like ninety three percent. Sorry, he's He had like ninety three percent pass accuracy. Like he had a calm game. Like he he, he played well. He played yeah. well. People people are lash, calling him rash because of a because of a a fluky goal that nine point nine out of ten times he basically blasts that ball into Rosette and 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 gets it out of there, man. It's it's ridiculous, man. I think. Vicario as well. Like, I think you made a great point. His passing, we've not really seen the varied passing range yet, right? But what we have seen is someone who is ultra comfortable with the ball, even when the opposition is trying to press. He can yeah. play it out of his right foot. He can play it out of his left foot. Short passing, he's always going to find the players. And he just gives us 
a better platform to actually build up from the back. And then when you look at his save percentage as well, he's made some big saves for Spurs this season. Yeah. Against United, against Burnley, against Brentford, against um, against Arsenal. Like, he's made big saves, bro. In all of our games, he's made big saves. I think he's got, what, like the second best save percentage so far this season? Obviously, yeah. Alisson is number one. So the biggest compliment I can give all of, our, all of the back five, which is basically brand new with the exception of two players is that they've come in and nobody is talking about, Oh my God, waste of money. Everyone is saying these are top signings. Everyone yeah. is looking at these signings and saying these guys are good because they've come in and they've literally given Spurs an, a lift, bro, a proper lift. Nah, for real. Um, I was going to say as well, X, you touched on Udogi earlier on having a yellow card. So earlier, you know, Sar and Basuma actually picked up a yellow card uh, late in the first half as well. So the whole second half, that energy, that vim, that force you're seeing, Bro, play, they're playing with the yellow card as well. Yeah, but that's because the referee thought he was Gambit, bro. He was a prick, fam. I'm telling you, bro. We got we got Homer, we got Marge, Lisa, Ramba. We had about four yellow cards by the end of the damn game. You know them way right there. And the yeah. wickedest thing is, yeah, Sars one was deserved, didn't it? Yeah, because he took one for the team. Bisuma's one, took, bruv, come on, blood. Yeah, yeah he man had his hands behind his back, yeah, saying whatever he said. <laughs> I saw him. He was like this. Yeah, you get me, fam. I was morphing like a Power Ranger and that. You get me, fam? And then a man ended up getting booked, blood. Well, bro, the referee couldn't wait to book our players, blood. He couldn't wait. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So the nah. fact that all of these men held their head, you get me, fam? Being on a yellow card against Arsenal and none of them didn't pull out of challenges or nothing, bro. Udogi especially, bro. I thought he was going to get sent off. There was one when I think he lost the ball and then he rugby tackled, man. Like, he, he, you, know, you know when he do that? Do you, do you remember? That movie, you know when he grabbed the brother? He grabbed the brother yeah. by his leg. And yeah. I thought that was it. I thought it was second yellow. You get me? When I saw nothing given, blood, I was just like, my God. I was praying, fam. Yeah. Telling you, bruv. But the fact that the yeah, team held... One of a player... Huh? One other player I was going to say I want to talk about as well is um, Ape of Kumar just sent a super chat as well. He says, Brennan Johnson looked good. Hopefully he's available against Liverpool. We need to give him a run. Obviously, that was his um, first fight. start. Um, we need us. him. What did, you, what did you lot make of his kind of first start? Were, were you like impressed with what you saw? Not like, really. I thought you were smelly. I thought oh, you were is smelly. it? I thought you were smelly. <laughs> I, I like that differing reaction. That's, that, that's a different still. That's you know what? You know what? Because I'm not going to lie, yeah? Go on, but you can go it. first, Toes. Go first, Toes. Go on. All right, cool. I thought The reason why I thought he was smelly is because I just thought he was quite careless in possession um, and his, his two chances completely fluffed Fluffed, fluffed these lines, man. I think he made it. He made them savable shots for, for David Raya. But I'm not going to get on his back because I feel like it's a very difficult fixture to come into, man. I mean, your first start for your new club and it's literally the fiercest fixture in the Spurs calendar. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to chastise him for for having a subpar performance. But I would... I, I, I think it was clear as day that I think of all our three attackers on the day, he was the weakest. <laughs> This guy, <laughs> this guy's a dickhead. He was the he was the he was the weakest. But listen, he's young. The manager trusts him. The manager has bought him for a reason. So when you look at what the manager has done so far with some of the other players, he makes me even think that even me with my own not so great thoughts on Brennan Johnson, like I gotta give this this guy a chance now, and we've got to see what he can do because ultimately his pace can hurt teams. And ultimately, as poor as he was for me, he ended up with two chances. He ended exactly, up bro. That's the thing, isn't it? His pace is the difference. Like, we haven't had that in some time, blood. You get me? If I'm honest, yeah, like, for me, Kulu was stinking out the first half because Kulu had most the majority of the ball, isn't it? And Kulu was just, just doing the same old stuff, blood. You know what Thanks. I mean? He grew into the game, Kulu, innit? Like, the second half, I hope. From what I'm just... Maybe I'm just happy with everyone else, yeah? But for me, I remember... Kulu was just getting the majority of the ball. Everything was down his side and he was just doing the same. You know a man that looked like he can run, but he can't run? Like You know, yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. trying, but he just can't. You know what I mean? He's trying, bro, but he just can't beat the guy, blood. Pause. He can't do that, blood. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, for me, Kulu in the start, first half, he was more, like, not being wasteful. But Johnson, like, bro... One through ball, he's gone, fam. He was cooking, man. Don't get me wrong, he's no end product, blood. You know them way there. Like, he mm. never looked like scoring 
any of them strikes. You get me, fam? And, like, for me, he should have done a lot better. That one where they're saying, oh, David Raya, amazing save, blood. Straight down the middle, fam. That was like Saka's penalty, blood. Do you know them way there? You get me? But even softer. Do you get me, blood? It was straight down the middle. There was no conviction in that, blood. If you're going to strike the ball, you blast that, bruv. Bottom corner. You know what I'm saying? But for for his debut and for him to be thrown into that, do you know what I mean? For him to be thrown into the North London derby, Tobes, I'm not going to lie, blood. I'm just going to... I disagree. Like, I say he, he had a... De- I was actually upset when he got injured. Like, I wasn't trying to sub him off, blood. I weren't trying to see... Um, if I was going to see Richarlison, it wouldn't be him. I would have, I would have taken off Kulu before him at, at that point. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. So, yeah, I, I actually, I actually kind of agree more there. I think coming into that kind of as your first start, I think is asking a lot. And then for me... I've said I'm not expecting a lot from Brennan Johnson. I think that there's not the expectations that we had on Richarlison last year, for example, to give us something. With Brennan Johnson, I know he is just going to be energy and legs off the bench. If you get me a couple of goals here and there, calm. But personally, I'm not expecting fireworks from him. And he gave me kind of what I expected from him. The problem is, is I don't want him starting week in, week out. If no. he, you know, he's not going to be able to kind of produce the goods. But if you're talking... Last 20 minutes, last 15 minutes, when men are tired, that is the perfect kind of weapon you want to bring. And I think that's the difference, in my opinion, between him and Richarlison. Richarlison will come on and give you graft and chase lost causes. But this man is actually a frick with that pace, bro. But only because of that pace, in my opinion. You've got to, got to. And I hope this is where kind of Ange's coaching can kind of play a part where you can actually make him a little bit of a more polished finisher. Or, or at least a better in the final third, whether it's picking your you, or picking your you know what? You know what? I actually think he is a good finisher. From what, if there's one thing I can give this guy credit for, right? From what I've seen in the Premier League, he can finish. He can finish. So it's more a case of Ange harnessing his pace to try and put him in as many positions to score as possible. Because I look at him and I don't see him as someone who's going to burn his his man week in week out. I look at him as someone who's going to make runs to hurt the opposition, get him behind the defence as much as possible. You see that, that offside goal he scored for yeah. against Sheffield United. That's those type of runs. I expect him to well, make. I will say that is, that is what I like, though, is that in both the games he's kind of been involved, you've, you've seen goal mouth action. Kind of, he's yeah. been involved in and around there. So I'm like, all right, as long as you're getting in them kind of threatening positions, something will fall to you and something will drop, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, let me just read out a couple of super chats though, before we get some Liverpool predictions. Ob and big up the super chat. Um, Eighteen Supermarket eighty two says this show has to be weekly. Three of the best Spurs fans around make this happen. Come on, you Spurs! In a coma says two games we dropped points. Both had on goals and two dodgy pens. Listen, it ain't been too bad. Trust me, the results even with that kind of scoreline, the two two. As I said before the game, I would have took that anyway, but. Moving forward now, we've got Liverpool at the weekend, which in my opinion is like another one of the most unluckiest games, if you like, where we I think the last time we won there, uh, let me check that actually. 22nd Wembley, of blood. Oh, Wembley. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, no, Wembley was the last time Wembley, we won. Wembley. Yeah. We were both at that game, got spun, blood. X, you were at that one as well, innit? Four, one. Yeah, I was there, blood. Yeah. Yeah. Get me Four, fam. One. I was there, blood. I remember that game. That one was mad. But, but what's what's you lot kind of feeling and prediction going into this one, if you like? Because at home now, having had that kind of confident start, good result against away at the Emirates last week, are you think are you feeling confident going into this one? You know what's it mad, is. yeah. Like I haven't, I ain't really been watching Liverpool. Like I know the results that they've mm-hmm. got. I've seen the highlights of their games, but I haven't watched a ninety minute Liverpool game this season, in it. It's for me to know exactly what they're dealing with, innit? You know what I'm saying? But I know they've improved, like, drastically. Do you know what I'm saying? But what I do know is what we're on, fam. And one thing I can say is Liverpool could never defend, blood. They were always leaving spaces open, innit? And the football that we play now, yeah, it's going to be a goal fest, fam. You know them way there? It's either yeah. going to be a goal fest or it's just going to be a, a tick attacker fest in the middle of the park, blood. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. But both teams, though, like, I don't see. But for me... I think this is our best chance at beating them in years. Let's be honest, isn't it? I think it's our best chance because, like, last season, we should have beat them. But mm-hmm. with the manager, like, lot both, bruv, last season, I was few. Which one, though? We're not not even, not the Prue Prue blood. Not the Prue Prue blood. One. Not that one. Not that one. 
Do you know the one when Perisic just kept missing? They beat us at home, fam. 2-1. Yep. Yeah, yep. we should have won that game. Hundred we shouldn't have drew. We should have won that game. Right. They were absolutely shocking um, at home last season, yeah? How they managed to steal that one, I'll never know. And then the Prue Prue blood one, flipping <laughs> that flipping fiasco. I don't even want to... You get me, blood? I don't yeah, want to yeah. talk about that. Forget that one. You get me? I don't even want to talk about that one, blood. But, but yeah, gonna... nah. So for me, like... They have improved since last season. I'm not going to lie. They have. Their front is crazy, blood. You know what I'm saying, fam? Straight out of Harley Street, that front. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, it's one of them ones where... You're crazy, man. <laughs> I'm thinking... You know, you know what? I'm feeling like this one's going to be harder than Arsenal, isn't it? I'm not going to lie. This one's going to be more difficult than Arsenal. This is what I think, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I would say a draw. I would say a draw. If I was given a prediction, but it's going to be very difficult, man, because Liverpool are cooking this season, bro. And I think a lot of people are just thinking, oh, just because they lost a lot of their midfielders and that, that they're not going to be up there, fam. But people are thinking that it's Arsenal and City's Premier League. But man, need to watch out for Liverpool because they're going to be up there, blood. I said, I, th I think they're finishing second this season, in my opinion. I think the way they've started the season as well, they're putting mm. people on notice. They've carried on the good form from last year. I said, this is one of the unluckiest games in our calendar fixture list. And every time we've come up against them, whether it's rattling the crossbar 99 times, Moussa Sissoko 1v1s, Bergwijn missing sitters, bro. Like, we've been through it all. So... In this game, I'll be honest with you, I'm looking at their midfield and thinking they've just started to find their groove. McAllister um, uh, with uh, Soboslai and Curtis Jones. Mm. What we need to do is them boys, Basuma and Saar, need to physically impose themselves on their man. And I want Madders basically to make sure whoever's sitting in that midfield, you see McAllister, today you're going to be doing defensive duties. Ain't no <laughs> passing, ain't no playmaking like... I feel like that's where the game could be won and lost in that midfield three because their midfield is still kind of adapting, still getting used to it. Their attack is killer. Cut the supply to that. And that's the midfield, in my opinion. So for me, I, as I, as you said, honestly, I think this is our best chance to win it. And I'm, after the Arsenal result now, I'm actually feeling more confident in thinking, I think we could break this kind of Liverpool hoodoo now, especially with it being at home. If it was at Anfield, mm -hmm. I'll hold my hands up. Ooh, Forget ooh. about it. Well, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because at home, I'm looking at it, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm expecting a 2-1 win, I'll be honest with you. It is, and as you said, it's going to be tough, I think, the game. There's going to be big moments. But I think one thing we've seen in the team throughout this season is there have been tough moments. We've shown character, though, to get through the other side. United first half, we should have been down 2-3-0. But we showed yeah. character to actually. Arsenal, go concede twice. You come back twice. Character. So for me, it's like those are the kind of bigger games as well. Where I'm like, all right, now now there's a bigger one at home. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I know, I know you man will be in the stadium as well. So ain't no doubt the sport will be there. So you know I'm saying two one. Yeah. I'm going. Well, Tobes, what are you saying? Send your yeah, predictions in the chat as well. I'll try to read them out. Make sure you're liking the stream as well before we finish up. But yeah, Tobes, let me know what you're thinking. I think I, I echo yours and X's thoughts, man. I feel like it's time. Longer with you. I've seen us. I think it's like one win in our last what, like fifteen. 16 games against Liverpool, something like that. And and the thing that I hate with Liverpool is whenever we play them, there's always an element of jamminess to their to their results. It pisses me off. Last season at Anfield, Lucas Moura inexplicably gives the ball to, to Diogo Jota just after we pulled it back to 3-3. Free free. We were good value for a point and we go and lose the game. The game at home that X spoke about... <coughs> Typical Spurs lot of last season where we'd start off really slow, give teams the initiative. And then when we tried to fight back, it's too late. And we had so many chances. I think we had like four big chances created, four big chances missed. We hit the woodwork. Like it took a ridiculous cane finish to beat to beat Allison that day. And it's just like, when is this gonna when is this gonna end, Robbie? Like, when is it gonna end, Robbie? Even the season before, do you remember when they put a Tyler Tyler Morton midfield? They had like Tyler Morton. Yeah, uh, bro, and they still thing. got the draw. And they still got the draw. We had, bro, we had about like six, oh. seven clear chances, bro. And somehow they got the draw. And then even at Anfield, we went one nil up, shut them out completely, and they score with some ridiculous oh. deflected Diaz goal. So we, luck is never on our side when it comes to Liverpool. But I feel like for the first time in ages, I feel like we actually have a team, man to man, that I have full confidence to beat Liverpool. Before, it's always like, oh, yeah, maybe we can beat them. But now I'm like, 
I feel like this team can go and do damage to Liverpool. Like, we're going to, similar to Arsenal, we're going to give it as good as we're going to take it. And if you want to pause or whatever, I don't really care. Cool. Mm. I'm talking about football, right? They're going to score. They're definitely going to score against us because their attack is potent. They're going to score against us, but I think we can score against them. And I think the point you made about the midfield is so important, right? I'm looking at that midfield of Jones, McAllister and Sabozla. They work hard. They can find the attackers, but they can be got at. I saw Bellegarde for Wolves. I saw Bellegarde for Wolves having a jolly up in that midfield. I saw Enzo Fernandez having a jolly up in that midfield. I've watched Liverpool this season. And yeah. they're, they're, annoyingly for me with Liverpool, like they're picking up points and they're, they're beating teams and they're scoring lots of goals. But I'm still not fully convinced that this is a team that are going to go all the way and challenge for a title, right? And I need Spurs to go and end this hoodoo on Saturday, Saturday evening. Perfect evening fixture. Go out there and beat them. And I think we're going to beat them. No, I hear that, blood. I'm going for a 3-2 win. I think we're going to win, win this game 3-2, yes. Nah, fuck it, blood. Fuck it then. Nah, 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 nah. Let's have a let's 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 composure, go. blood. You get me now. No. You're going for the win now, <laughs> fam. You know what I mean, blood? Yeah. yeah. You, bruv. Less of that, bro. Okay, me. Every time these man win, they celebrate like they brought Brookside back. So it's about time we RIP Brookside, fam. You get me? Mm -hmm. That's it, man. Going 2-1, blood. Let's we're going 2-1, go. fam. Go. That's what we're going for, bro. Let's I'm telling you. We need to cook these, man. I'm telling you. On this super chat as well, Um, old Ben E.E. -E says, Kulu was wasteful. First goal came from him giving the ball away. We had six consecutive possessions where we gave the ball away. A few of them from Kulu, Busuma, and Udogi. We can't be complacent. That is very true as well. Like, the same quality players that have stepped up with Manu... Done. They have to step up in these other games as well, and they have to continue the good form, bruv. So, I uh, fully agree. Then, Kulu, I can't lie to you, man. Uh, he disappointed me last game. He was one that I was really looking to and thinking, yeah, he's, he's gonna have to step up to get back in that kind of sack of conversation, if you like. But hey, bro, man, he's got no it. competition on that right, yeah. bro. So he's just thinking the place out, bro. Bro, you know I mean, what? This is where I'm hoping. Listen. Uh, we January, we need to do something, man. We need to do something. But yo, I feel like he's been playing better. I know he didn't have a great game against Austin, but I feel like he's been playing better recently. Yes, man. over the past two, three weeks. But mm. I can't lie to you. That game for me was one where I'm looking at you like, I need you to cook. Uh, enough of this. All right, you can cook against Sheffield and all of that. The big dogs are here now. He's going to cook against Liverpool. You saw what he did last season. You remember when he came on the pitch against hey, Liverpool? Hey, 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 hey. You know if there's one person who's never going to sell their Kulu stocks, it's me, brother. I, I, I just have high expectations. That's all it is. Fair, so fair, for fair, me, fair. I, I just want him to rise next game. But listen, we'll end it on that anyway. X, as always, appreciate you joining us, man. We'll have you on. Come on, G. At some point throughout the season, I'm sure. And Tobes, as always, will link up next week in on your channel, I'm sure. Listen... All the links are in the description below. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're liking the video on the way out as well. We appreciate you lot joining us this week, and we shall be again back next week. Till then, people, peace. Safe.